Today, I'd like to share with you some of my personal stories that not many people know. And with these stories, three life lessons that I learned, sometimes the hard way, and a few habits that I've unlearned, sometimes the harder way. My hope today is that you leave wanting to take control of your lives, embrace uncertainty, be a risk taker, a change maker, but nonetheless, to paint your own canvas. Okay, let's start. Lesson number one, burst the bubble. What do I mean by that? Let me take you back to my roots for a bit of a context. I was born in a small town in Romania. Some would say it's the poorest one in the country, and I don't want to contradict them. Uh, my parents were hardworking, middle class people, one single job their entire life at the factory in town. In the early 90s, the factory shut down, and both of them became unemployed. For middle class, Having a decent living, our family plunged into poverty and the uh, insecurity of what came next. I was surrounded by my parents' love, and uh, they've put all their energy, everything, into my education and to provide me with the bare minimum necessities. But they instilled into my head a fear, the fear of unknown, the fear of uncertainty, and the fear of not having a safe job with stable income. Yep, look at this kid. Yep, that's me, 30 years ago. Despite our financial issues, and uh, despite that sad face you see on the screen, I was a happy kid. I did have a happy childhood. And I was rocking math. I was the best in class 12 years in a row in mathematics. So I could say I was a happy nerd, a happy geek. I can see some similar faces in here. <laughs> but my world was in a bubble. Um, I knew nothing about the outside world. It was just my family, my friends, and my small town. All my role models were teachers and doctors, all of them with stable jobs, safe jobs, and stable income. So, and given my passion for the numbers, I could see myself following a similar career, a teaching one. And I could say I had a dream, a dream creating in the bubble. I could see my life ahead already, and that felt safe, until one day. Until one day, and I remember that day really, really clearly nowadays. I was 18, like most of you here in the room, and I was ready for a lifetime teaching career. And uh, we've got a distant relative visiting us, first time and last time I saw that lady. She used to be a teacher, but now she traveled the world with her new job. She was telling me stories about a lifestyle and places that she was visiting. I could relate only with the movies. I was fascinated that someone who left from the same small town could leave such experiences unknown to me. Finding out what my career aspirations were, with a smile on her face, she remembered the happiness and joy being surrounded by students. But she wasn't feeling complete with the road she has taken. That's why she made a change. If she would be my age, we would have to start again. She would start the computers, which was new at that time, especially in Romania. I could have a well-paid job, I could travel the world, and my brains would be challenged given how technology advances. And she left. And she left. I was 18, did not have a computer at home, knew nothing about technology. I was a pen and paper happy geek. But I knew I wanted to do something special with my life, and here it was. Someone from my outer world, penetrating my well-known universe with this new perspective. I felt my dream breaking, my bubble cracking, and instinctively I tried to protect it and to reject this new wild perspective. But it was so shiny at, at the reach of my hand, given my math skills. All I had to do is learn, learn, and learn a bit more. And after sleepless nights, I went to my parents and told them, Mom, Dad, I know you've put all your love, all your energy into guiding me to become a teacher. But now I want to do something different, computer science. And being outside of their bubble, outside of their known universe, they said no. And sometimes a no coming from the parents, it's a no. We need to accept it. We need to work with it and move on. But sometimes, when we know it's the right thing to do for us, when we strongly believe in something, I believe we need to burst the bubble. And this is what I've done. Burst the bubble and started computer science. Lesson number two, 
do the stuff you love. I would say with people you love, but let's stick to do the stuff you love for the moment. Let me take you fast forward through my next 10 years journey. While in university, I started to discover technology and be passionate about that. I found satisfaction in writing and coding my first app, my first game, and my first website. I've seen them working and seen them used by thousands of people exactly like you. And finishing computer science in the early 2000s, I know it's a long time ago, uh, provided me with plenty of opportunities. I traveled the world. I was playing with a lot of technologies bubbling around, and um, I could change jobs easily. And when changing jobs, my mind at that time was choosing three key things. More money, who doesn't like that? Better status, and self-importance. I was now in my early 30s, married, my daughter one year old. I had a very well-paid job. And I had things in life I never thought I could have when I was a kid. And I reached a financial level I never thought I could reach when I was a child. I thought I had everything I needed, everything I hoped for. And of course, until one day. Until one day when I uh, ended up in hospital. My blood tests were a mess. I was fatigued. The doctors told me I was in burnout, having an early stage depression. And I could not relate the word depression with myself being a happy guy. So I had to take some days off to reflect on this. Being always on the run, being always in the middle of the whirlwind, I did not notice what was gradually happening to me. I was working extremely long hours with people I did not share the same values. I did not have time anymore for my family, friends, and my hobbies. I was paid a generous amount of money, but I did not feel any joy spending it. On one hand, I wanted to continue to provide for my family the same financial level. On the other hand, I was far from being happy. My canvas here was a mess, full of green, scattered and little orange. I was not in control of my brushes anymore. And did I have a choice? Could I change something? And this turmoil reminded me of a very special book for me, and I do recommend it to everybody here in the room if you haven't read it by now, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And a special quote in there that I haven't lived by lately, and an idea that I really loved, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the freedom to choose their path. The freedom to choose their path. And it was revealing and intriguing for me. I just took the book from the shelf, reread it in one single breath. And when I closed the book, I just said to myself, Lucian, you need to get back in control of your life. Whatever we've learned up until now has brought us here, but what if we unlearn a few things and allow for a new perspective? How the canvas would change? Well, of course, I quit my job the next day without having anything lined up. And that was a very risky decision for me, but I had to do this for my family and for, my, and for me, because I was not okay. And I decided to do things differently and do the stuff I love and not search for money, not search for status, and not search for self-importance or self-validation. Lesson number three, last but not least, never settle. And as I said, I started a different path. I was now surrounding myself with people who would motivate me, energize me, inspire me. And uh, I was looking for purpose in my life and meaning in my work. I found satisfaction in running startups, building open source products with vibrant communities behind them. And that felt good. Being right in the middle of technology with enthusiastic people, money suddenly stopped playing such a critical role in my life. And that felt good. I found satisfaction in kicking off and scaling up large technology centers in this country, and I've done a few. And ideating, creating the vision, and bringing in passionate people to build technology products for a better life. That felt rewarding and fulfilling. I was happy. My, my canvas was balanced. I had everything. Of course, until one day. Until one day when I received a phone call from my future boss, who soon became my um, mentor and my friend. He was calling me to present me an opportunity opening in the country uh, to run the digital practice of a big four. Don't know if you are familiar with big fours. I was not. Um, for me, at that point, big fours were competitive firms with no stake in technology. So of course, as a technology guy, I said, no, not keen to entertain such discussion. But after a few days, I said to myself, Lucian, 
why settle? Why don't we allow for new perspectives and just find out what's, what's about? And I went, and from 15 minutes coffee chat, it turned into like a two hour proper interview. And I was blown away by the complexity of the ecosystem. I was blown away by the technology behind the products and the scalability of the opportunity. Now I was not even confident enough in my skills that I could do the job. So as everybody here in the room would do, I have asked, do you have a job description? I know it sounds silly, but you would ask the same. But I was lucky enough that in front of me was a smart guy with a smile on his face who said, no, why settle for a job description? Why settle for the normal? Why don't you go home, take your time, and write your own job description? And that was a shock to me because it was the first time I had such freedom to define my own path, my own canvas. I knew this has to be the place for me. And as you imagine by now, I've gotten the job and I'm painting my canvas for the last six years and I reimagine my job description every day for the last six years. And here I am, fulfilled, I believe still bursting bubbles. And doing the stuff I love, unlucky for me, with people I love. But I guess I'll never settle because I'm always learning and I'm learning. And I'm not the type of person to give advice. The only person I give advice is myself. And um, my hope today is that when you leave this room this evening, you'll feel more positive to embrace uncertainty. Tackle risks with positivity and see challenges and opportunities instead of fear. But nonetheless, take your brushes, take your colors, take your imagination and paint your own canvas. Thank you very much.